Hey folks, Michael Collins here in ViralReporter.com. Where are we? We're in Santa Barbara. Yep, that's right. We're at the home of Will and Robin, and they have been so kind to be able to show us this fish, and we're gonna test it. First off though, before we do, I wanna show that we took a 10 minute background here, and it was 517. You divide that by 10, it's 51.7 counts per minute. So what we're gonna look for is any overages in these sea creatures that uh, have been fished. So you were going to tell me, Will, about these uh, these uh, the sea food sample here. We've got some yellowtail that was caught in July off the coast of Baja, Mexico. Excellent. Some bluefin tuna also caught off of Baja, uh, same time frame in July of this year. Right. Some rockfish caught about two weeks ago off of San Miguel Island. Mm -hmm. We've got some ling cod that was caught off of Santa Rosa Island in July. We've got some uh, squid caught on the back side of Santa Rosa Island in about 70 feet of water. And I went to the grocery store and purchased these local Santa Barbara mussels. Mm -hmm. um, these are farmed um, about a mile off of uh, the beach. Uh, they're farmed with oysters, but unfortunately, we can purchase any oysters today. Right. Sampling. And uh, since albacore season is now, and they're catching a lot of them up in Northern California, I purchased some albacore to include in the testing. That's excellent. And then we've got a couple more samples. Um, this is some calico bass caught off the of Santa Cruz Island right. in July. This is uh, some white sea bass caught last year. Excellent. And this is some mahi-mahi that I caught in Cabo San Lucas uh, October of last year. Excellent. Just uh, as a sample. Excellent. So I'm going to begin, I'm going to start up, up at the top over here. And uh, uh, of course, folks, we've got uh, uh, Denise Ann with us. And what she'll do is uh, she'll take notes uh, and uh, when I give her some readings that we might might get. Now, what, what are we looking at here? This is uh, yellowtail. Yellowtail, very good. Now, as we all know, we got uh, 51.7 background, so let's just see what happens. Now, with the Inspector nuclear radiation monitor, folks. You've got to remember we have a plus or minus 15% uh, error. So it has to be over or under 15% to be a, a, a true reading. Now we're leaving the samples in the bag because we're looking for beta emitters, cesium-134, cesium-137, and strontium-90. These are the beta emitters that we're looking for from Fukushima. And right here, our yellowtail, which is a, a local fish that does not uh, migrate. It, it actually does migrate. Oh, does it? Back in north and south from, uh, okay. from uh, Baja, California to about Southern California. And so they, they come up north. Right. Come up north as the water come, warms up. Right. And then... Uh, around October, November, though, they chase the warm water back down into Baja. Okay. So they don't they don't swim in, in a circular pattern. I see. Up and down the coast. We're Up we are, we had a high now of 64, 66. But remember, it can jump around. We're going to kind of eyeball this up to 68, up to 70. And Denise Ann will write on that piece of paper that we had a high of 70 on the, on the yellowtail. Okay. However, however, it is moving up and down around the, uh, the uh, mean or the background. And a lot of down. It went down as low as 38. It's at 44 right now. And as most of us know, water does inhibit uh, uh, the readings. 
However, you can get a pretty good idea. If it's hot, you'll know. It's going up to 82, 84. The thing about uh, yellowtail mites mm -hmm. is they, they typically swim where there's kelp. Mm -hmm. So what happens is during the summer, kelp breaks off the forest along the beaches. Right. And they, they float along the coast, you know, anywhere from 30, 40, 50, 70 miles offshore. Right. And what happens is these kelp beds float and they hold bait fish. And so if, they're, if the kelp is radioactive, um, right. it's very possible that the bait fish is also radioactive. Right. And the yellowtail chasing the bait under the kelp beds would pick up some of that. That's very possible. We had a high of 84 there. Now I'm going to um, move over here. If you would lift that chair up and pull it back so I can sit on it. Put it back in, please. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go and we're looking at... This is bluefin tuna. Bluefin tuna. Now these... The, these fish were about 30 pounds each. Right. Uh, the larger ones were about 38, 40 pounds. Right. Now, tuna grows about 12 inches per year. Um, and so the, the fish that we were catching were probably three to four years old. Okay, okay. So, and bluefin, uh, as you know, uh, follow the uh, currents right. all around back and forth to That's uh, right. Japan. So remember, folks, we got a 51.7 background here. We got bluefin tuna. Let's go right in on it. So it's very possible that these the fish that we caught here and were sampling have circulated uh, the Pacific two right. or three times now. You know, uh, is it possible, actually, if you did open that up and put it in there, if that's okay? Yeah, there you go. Now I can get much closer to it. Would you like a towel? No, it's just fine. Now, this also means, folks, by getting rid of the plastic bag that we can pick up alpha. And as you know... We picked up Alpha in the rain over Bryce Canyon about six months after the meltdowns began. <coughs> so it went up initially, but it's not now. Which we like. We don't want our... Now remember, we've had tuna caught off of San Diego that was hot. It's also a function of the meat of a tuna isn't uniformly uh, ionizing if it's been exposed to cesium. It can happen in specific spots. So pardon me for the, the camera moving around like this. This bluefin seems to be coming in. Pretty safe. Yeah. Like that. Here we go. I'm back again with that bluefin tuna. It's seeming nice, cool as a cucumber. Now people would say, now wait a minute. There have been bluefin tuna that have been caught in San Diego that were hot and this one doesn't seem to be. Well, every animal isn't the same and isn't exposed to the same thing. But what we're seeing right here is bluefin tuna at background. Now we're gonna move over to some rockfish that we'll caught uh, September 13, 2013. Rockfish is, uh, as the name implies, that they like to hang around rock outcroppings. Uh, and they're around islands. This as well. 
is going to make some good eating. Michael, we got two more tunas now. Oh, yeah. One is the tuna collar that's the fattiest part oh. of the fish. So, oh, let's check that. Let's, we're going to move on over to that. Will's got tuna collar. Uh, right there you go. Your hands don't freeze. See here, folks. Oh, yeah. So this is where the fat accumulates mm -hmm. in the tuna. Mm-hmm. The inspector is incredibly sensitive. This still is, that was a high, the tuna collar was a high of uh, 70. Just still not really into the. I think we're going to find, well, 70 is a, okay, 72. Has slightly over background. Now, here we have tuna caught on uh, July 18th of this year, 2013. Let's check it out. Now, notice, folks, you see the ice there? You get a little inhibition on the radiation readings from the, from the water. But you really also... Don't get so much of an inhibition that you can't really tell what's going on. And with this, this is coming in. Now, when you see me moving around the sample, it's because you might have a little something in part of it, not all of it. But this is coming in the background, too. And did I give you a high on the rockfish? Okay, then I'll go back over to the rockfish. Okay. So this, all those tuna samples seem to be coming in at about background. Now we're back over to the rockfish. See that, folks? Caught September 7th, 2013. Pardon the uh, somewhat amateurish uh, camera holding, but... How many times do you get a chance to test fish like this? And we have been asking folks, we got a high 72 in the rockfish. We've been asking folks for two years, hey you fishermen, help us out. Let's find out what's going on, 74, because uh, uh, it's, you know, it's not easy to do. You can go into a market and look at a piece of fish, but you don't know where it came from. These came from Southern California, Channel Islands. But even though we got a high of 74 on this, that was a that was a jump that did not seem to be over background. So that's not over background. Now this we got some mussels. This is kind of those are mussels, right? Yep. And uh, let's see, let's check it out, folks. The center of the detecting circular. Uh, Geiger Mueller tube, okay, I'm drooling now, I'm crying out loud, sweating and drooling. I'm scaring these people, folks. Uh, is right there. So this right in the middle of this bowl. The mussels, Denise, uh, high as seventy, but still looking like background because it may go to seventy. And that may statistically be over the 15 plus or minus. But this particular creature has a shell. And we can't discount that uh, there might be uh, uh, isotopes of calcium that would be very lowly ionizing. But this, this seems to be a background too, which is we have had four uh, good newses. The, the, the first one was a little higher, but now this is squid. Squid. Squid, folks. Yeah, there we go. Cool. 
46, 52. We know we have a 51.7 background. Yeah, you can pack everything up that I've already Just tested. To eat. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, see folks, we got a, a, a background of 51.7. You see it going to 64 here. It is still within the error range. And it went up to 66 on the squid high, but it didn't sustain up there. It came right back down and down around 52. The squid is at background. More good news. Now we have some albacore tuna here. And I'm going to come right on in on it. It doesn't have a bag around it. It is smoke, so if there's any radioactive wood, you know. They smoke that. albacore? Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> well, at least the only heat will be from the cooking, because this one, the albacore here, is coming in at below background. High of 58 on the albacore. I found some yellowtail color. Excellent. Fatty part of the Here we tails. go. We're going to go back to some yellowtail color. Caught on July 18th this year. We're looking for beta, so we don't need to take that bag, take it out of the bag. You've heard me admonish people don't eat anything out of the Pacific. But I've got to tell you, if here we're back. This was the one that actually got my attention the most. This, what is that? This, this is ling cod. Ling cod. Um, there's a proviso to that. Uh, if you've got an inspector nuclear radiation monitor and you can check the fish yourself and it's coming in a background like this, uh, let me tell you folks, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And so uh, the fact that this is coming in the background, I say bon appetit, okay? And I want all the fishermen out there to, uh, to uh, note that Will and uh, it's really been absolutely upright, upstanding uh, citizen with his wife Robin in allowing us to test this fish. This is the one that I thought, hmm, and I'm back and it's reading background. And what have we found? Every single sample has come in at background or under. Uh, EnviroReporter.com says this is safe to eat. This also means that as this crisis continues, we're going to need to keep looking at this fish. And we need folks uh, who are in the Los Angeles area, Ventura area, Santa Barbara area that as time goes by, you are going to want to show us your fish, and we will keep an eye on it. But the news from Santa Barbara today, September 13, 2013, at ViralReporter.com, with Will and Robin and Denise Ann and Michael is, let's eat. And I'm going to just take them right over to the window to just show you folks, this is what we're talking about. Santa Barbara, baby. Those fish are good to go. EnviroReporter.com. We'll see you soon.